Welcome back to 30 Days of Photoshop. Today, I'm gonna to show you how smart objects can make a huge difference in your workflow. Hey there, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com, where we make learning fun. And as a part of our 30 Days of Photoshop series, which I hope you're enjoying so far, by the way, I'm having a fantastic time with this series. We're jumping into smart objects. Now, these are an essential part of working non-destructively in Photoshop. And here's a couple of reasons why you'll wanna start using them today. So smart objects work by creating a reference of your image. So any changes that you make to that image become non-destructive. We're gonna show you how changing the size of your image, going from a large image and shrinking it way, way, way small, and then blowing it back up again, won't lose any resolution when you use a smart object versus when you use a regular layer, you're gonna lose a ton of information. Smart objects also allow you to use smart filters, which can be undone at any point in time, making any filter non-destructive. We got an awesome tutorial for you. Let's jump into Photoshop. We're gonna start off by opening our images for today. We've got four different photographs and you can actually download these on flurn.com, just follow the link right down below so you can follow along with this episode. So the first thing I wanna do is just make these a little bit smaller. Uh, I'm just gonna zoom out on them. So I'm gonna hit Control or Command minus a couple of times. There we go. And I basically just need to be able to see all of my documents at the same time. Okay, now everything looks pretty good. I wanna go ahead and get all of these images into one document. So I'm gonna use my move tool and we're just gonna click and drag from one image to another. There we go, you can see it's transferred and then I can just close that one out because I don't need it anymore. There we go, let's go close that out and bring this one over here to finish it up. Now we're gonna hit F for full screen and go ahead and zoom in a little bit. So at this point we have a few different images and I wanna put these together in sort of like a, like a collage or album type thing. So I need a little bit more space in this image. So I'm actually gonna go with a square crop. So let's go ahead and hit C for the crop tool. Now, where we have our width and our height resolution, I'm gonna choose a one-to-one -one square, okay? And in this case, it's actually showing me a lot of other information we have in this photo, but we're gonna go right up here to the top and then stretch it down to the bottom. Make sure that where it says delete crop pixels is unchecked. That way it won't delete anything without you wanting it gone. Okay, now this looks fantastic. To start this off, I know we're gonna resize a couple of these different layers. You know what, we can go ahead and crop this in a little bit smaller. There we go. Something like that looks pretty good. Now, we're gonna resize a couple of these layers. So let's go ahead and choose this image as our starting point to show you one of the key benefits of smart objects. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer. We're gonna hit Control or Command J to duplicate it, and we'll just bring it right over here. So this layer, I'm gonna turn into a smart object and it's incredibly easy to do. Just right click on the layer itself and go to convert to smart object. Okay, so you have a little smart object icon right here on the bottom right of your thumbnail. That lets you know it's a smart object. And then this layer has no icon, so it's regular layer. All right, I'm just gonna type in regular and smart. And now I'm gonna apply the same exact transformation to both of these layers, and we can see how they do comparing a smart object versus a regular layer. So let's go ahead and hit Control or Command. I'm gonna click on both of those. Keep in mind, it's just a carbon copy of that layer. We're gonna hit Control or Command T, which is our transfer dialog, and I'm gonna just stretch these way, way, way small. Okay, we're just gonna make them absolutely tiny. I'm exaggerating a little bit here. I know this, but I wanna show you what the differences between a regular and a smart object. Click on the two of them, Control or Command T, and then we're just gonna click and drag. I'm gonna hold Shift so we maintain our aspect ratio, and then drag those up again, okay? Now, before I actually hit Enter, you can see a little preview of both of these. This is basically how many pixels we had left after making it small. Now, Photoshop is gonna do its best job to try to fill in information when I hit Enter, but we're gonna be very clear to see the regular versus the smart object. So let's go ahead and hit that little checkbox up there and see what Photoshop does. Okay, so here we can see very clearly as we zoom in, this information on the left is regular. Okay, this is just a regular layer that we made small and made large again. That's all that happened here. Now this layer is a smart object 
which we made incredibly small. We made it large again, and look, we've lost absolutely no resolution in that photograph. This is one of the huge reasons why smart objects are important. So anytime you're doing any resizing of any layers or images, it's a very good idea to use a smart object first. That way you're not going to lose resolution. All right, well, there we have it. So we have our smart object. Now these layers, we're gonna go turn these to smart objects too, because I don't wanna lose any resolution. So let's right click and convert that to a smart object. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing here, convert that one. And let's go ahead and convert that to a smart object too. So now we're gonna just kind of like make a little album uh, display. We're gonna go ahead and bring this image to the left here. All right, beautiful. And now I wanna basically each one of these documents to take some space on the right side of my image. So here's what we're gonna do. It's actually a pretty cool little uh, workflow. What we're gonna do is grab our rectangular marquee tool, okay? And I'm gonna make a selection right over here. This is where my other images are going to occupy space. So we're gonna make a selection right over here on the right hand side. And then I'm gonna take each of these three. There we go, we'll group all of them by hitting Control or Command G. And then I'm gonna click here on my layer mask. Perfect. So it simply just adds a layer mask to the right hand side. And because they're all in this group, now I can move them around and they're only gonna show up there. So what I need to do now is shrink these down a little bit. So we're gonna hit Control or Command T on our first one and go ahead and shrink it down. Make sure you hold Shift to maintain your aspect ratio. Okay, second one, there we go. We'll just shrink this one down a little bit. Fantastic, and here's our third. We'll go ahead and shrink that down a little bit to, as well. All right, that's gonna get, see how I shrank that down and maybe I'm like, oh, you know what, that's too small. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit bigger again. There we go, just one example of a time when you don't wanna lose resolution when you're making things larger and smaller. Now this looks great. Let's say for instance, I want this to change a little bit though. Let's say I wanna take this image here and make this my main image. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this image. We're just gonna bring it out right over top of this other image here. We've made it smaller, but now all I have to do is hit Control or Command T and make it larger again. And this, this can now become my main image. Fantastic, and let's take this other image and put it in there, okay? And I can hit Control or Command T and make this a little bit smaller, and then this can go right over here. So as I'm doing this, I'm making very, you know, very quick decisions as to like where everything is gonna go, and I'm not losing any resolution as we go along. Now, in this case, I'm like, ah, you know what? I think I liked it a little bit different the other way. So let's go ahead and bring this back out there, okay? Here we go, this will be our main image. Let's just make this a little bit larger again. This will go back up here, and I'm gonna have this get a little bit smaller. Fantastic. And go ahead and pull that right underneath there. Very cool. Now, at this point, I just wanna create a couple like lines in my image just to kind of break everything up. So, super easy, I'm gonna create a new line. We're gonna use our marquee tool, so M for the marquee tool. Okay, just draw like a tiny little selection and hit shift delete. We're gonna fill that with white. There we go. And this is just on top of everything. We're gonna hit controller command J and then controller command T. So command J is gonna duplicate and then command T is transform. There we go. And I'm just gonna put those right up top over everything. And now we have a nice little collage that looks great. So you can see that no matter how many times I make any of these images larger or smaller, I haven't lost any resolution at all. So that's our first main benefit of using smart objects. Now, the next big benefit is when we apply a filter to our photo. So let's go ahead and show you how that works. We're gonna go back to our original image here. This is our smart object. And I'm gonna go ahead and right click on this. We're gonna duplicate this layer. So let's go ahead and duplicate that. And then I'm gonna take this smart object status away. We're gonna right click and I'm gonna go to rasterize layer, which is right here, rasterize, and then this shows just called normal. So this is no longer a smart object. So I have one layer that's a smart object and one layer that's normal. Let's just make everything else invisible so it's not uh, distracting us. So one smart object and one normal. Now let's go to our smart object and let's say I wanna apply a little bit of sharpening. So we're gonna go to filter, down to sharpen and over to unsharp mask. All right, so you're looking at the image and you're like, yeah, this is looking awesome. 
I am just gonna sharpen the heck out of this because I love sharpening. Oh my gosh, it's so fun. Look at how sharp that is. Okay, now let's do the same thing with our normal layer. We're gonna go to filter, uh, down to sharpen and over to unsharp mask. And we're gonna use all the same settings. And we're gonna say, I'm so awesome at sharpening. Look how sharp that is. And then we're gonna take a little bit of a break go grab a little snack or a cup of coffee and come back and say, oh, whoa, whoa, I way over sharpened that. That doesn't look good at all. I wanna tone that down. Well, here on my normal layer, good luck, it's baked in. There's nothing I can do. Basically, I just have to start over because the sharpening is applied to this image. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at our smart object. The smart object, on the other hand, looks like the same deals going on. But check this out, because it's a smart object, now I have what's called smart filters. And any filter that you apply to a smart object becomes a smart filter. So I can undo this at any time. Look at this, I can just turn this unsharp mask off if I want, turn it back on, or I can just come to my senses and say, you know what, we just need to tone that sharpening way down. There we go, let's hit okay. And now it actually looks good. Again, I can turn it back off and on, I can see my before and after, and I can say, oh, you know what? I did a really good job there. That actually does look really nice. Whereas my normal without using a smart object, woo, okay, doesn't look great. So not only does a smart object help you with your sizing, but it will also help you with any filters. Now, here's another cool thing. I can actually apply that. Let's go ahead and turn these layers back on here. I can actually apply that sharpen to these other smart objects, okay? Because remember, each of these three layers, I made smart objects too. So all I have to do is hold Alt or Option, click on this little circle thing, and boop, drag it up to these other layers. Look at this. And then the same exact sharpening is getting applied. You can see them there. The same exact sharpening is getting applied to these other layers. And then, look at this. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom up here. I can still turn this off and on at any time. So it's the same exact sharpening that we applied to the other image. And if I want to, I can just double click here on the unsharp mask and I could change these settings a little bit. So I'm like, ooh, you know what? A little bit more sharpen on that one looks pretty good. All right, so there we have it. Not only can you save a lot of information by turning these effects off and on, but you can copy them from one image to another. So using smart objects, we now have a perfectly beautiful grid. If I decide at any point in time, you know what, I wanna take this image out and I just wanna you know, duplicate it and make it its own like full screen image. There we go. I can just make that larger, hit enter again, You know, basically like crop this back in, okay, and hit enter and there we go. I haven't lost any resolution even though I've made the layer larger and smaller and applied a filter. Aren't smart objects cool? I use them all the time. I think they're gonna change your workflow and help you become less destructive in Photoshop. Thank you so much for watching. If you're enjoying 30 Days of Photoshop, be sure to join. It's absolutely free. You get a calendar with all of 30 days. You get all the download images so you guys can follow along as well as bonus goodies. You can do that right down below. Thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye everyone.